Hey guys, happy October. For today's video, I'm going to be going over all of my favorite beauty products for the month of September. As always, every single month, can't believe it's October. Let's go ahead and just get straight into it. The first product that I have been loving this month, this is a newer product that I semi-recently tested. You saw it probably in a recent Get Ready With Me. Oh my gosh, I didn't wanna like it because it's so expensive, but it's really good. This is the Chantecaille Sheer Glow Rose Face Tint. This is probably my new favorite glowy primer. I've never come across a glowy primer that leaves a glow that quite looks like this, where it's natural, but it still is just enough to where it looks good underneath makeup. It has the prettiest rosy glow to it. It's exactly as it's described. It feels like skincare. It's the perfect prep for dry skin. It looks good on its own. It's gonna look good if you apply this all over the face with some concealer or a tinted moisturizer. Wow. That's all I can say about this product. It had an instant wow factor, which doesn't happen too often. So it is a pricier product, but for me, this is definitely one of the products from Shantikai that is worth the crazy price tag. Of course, you always wanna wait for whenever they have a sale, but this is the business. This is just like, wow. You like a glowy primer, you like a skincare element, Shantikai is the way to go. Next up is a drugstore product. We gotta balance out that Shantikai price with the L'Oreal Age Perfect Tinted Balm. I've talked about this in a few videos now, but I wanted to give it its moment in a monthly favorites video. So this is everything I wanted the Jones Road Foundation to be. I've said that like three times before, but there's no better way to describe this product. The Jones Road was just so oily. This one is not like that, but it has that really natural glowy look to the skin, but my hairs don't stick to it. It gives an extremely light coverage, but if you like that no makeup, makeup up look and you don't need a ton of coverage this is perfect it just gives you that glow makes you look better it's deeply hydrating I don't know why people aren't talking about this because this face balm is the best that I've tried I can't believe it's what like ten dollars really an amazing product definitely a standout product from the drugstore if you ask me and I've been trying a lot more drugstore makeup lately and I still I still love my high-end stuff, but this is one where I feel like it's even better than the high-end alternatives, so definitely a must-have. Another foundation that I've been loving is from House Labs. This is an awesome foundation. I've been wearing it a lot more recently as well, and the more that I wear it, the more that I like it. I feel like every time I wear this foundation and I look back at photos or videos and I go, oh my gosh, my skin looks so good. What was I wearing? It was this foundation. It is a great happy medium to where I feel like it's gonna work for a great range of skin tones. It's very perfecting on the skin. I find it's one of those foundations where you take a step back, your skin looks really perfected. It gives a true medium coverage. It's not too matte, but it also isn't too glowy. It's that happy medium right there. So it wears for a very long time as well. So if you're looking for just a good solid foundation, this is the way to go. I've been enjoying it a lot. I mean, I have it on my face right now and I just feel like my skin Skin looks so nice. It's not a light coverage product. It's not going to be natural like the L'Oreal, but if you want that coverage, baby, this is perfect and it doesn't feel heavy on the skin as well. I picked this up the day it launched and I did a full review and then my update is this foundation is amazing. And also along with that foundation, they did launch this powder. This is the Bio Blurring Loose Setting Powder. I very much enjoy this powder as well. One critique that I had about the foundation is I felt like it didn't blur like it said it would. That's when this powder comes in. It blurs everything that the foundation didn't. It is a very, it's not a light lightweight powder. I was gonna say it's lightweight. It's not lightweight, but it feels lightweight on the skin, but it, it's one of those powders where if you pack it on, it looks good, but it still doesn't look too powdery on the skin. It has some hold to it, you know? There's some oomph to it. It's not gonna be like a silica kind of powder, and it holds on to the makeup. I really feel like this helps with longevity of makeup because of the fact that it's not a lightweight powder, and it smooths out the skin. Again, it just really complements the foundation, but I've been using this with other foundations as well, and I've been enjoying what this has been doing for me. I would say it's really great 
for humid climates. I've been loving using this powder living in Florida. Couple more products from the drugstore from Milani. I did a whole dedicated video on these. That's how good they were as well as dedicated TikTok and Instagram. So had to give these their moment in this video. So these are the Milani liquid contour and liquid highlight. You can definitely check out my video to see how these compare to Charlotte Tilbury because I wanted to do the side by side. They are both quite different, but for the price difference, they do somewhat of the same job. So I I use the ginger liquid contour around the outsides of my face. It's a really great liquid bronzer shade for me. It's not going to contour, but I still use it in the contoury places. It's not the most emollient product, but it's not that hard to blend out. So, you know, it doesn't blend with absolute ease like the Charlotte Tilbury, but I also don't need to put that much work in. And for being an affordable option, I've really been enjoying this. And it also wears a really long time as well for being a liquid contour, which is important. And then the highlight I have in the shade Lunar. I would like to see this shade range expanded because Lunar is the lightest shade and it's quite gold on me but I really like this as a liquid highlight because it doesn't disrupt product or makeup underneath which is very rare I find for liquid highlights in myself but this also has a really pretty natural glow to it. It's not super metallic like the Charlotte Tilbury but it gives a very pretty glow from within look. I showed you my face but um so you can see in the demo it is quite natural because I do have a powder highlight over top but I just love the way that this blends in so seamlessly and combines with the makeup that you have on underneath but it doesn't disrupt anything and I just think these are two very solid products from the drugstore and I've been enjoying reaching for these I like the size of the applicators they're nice and small they allow for detail work especially when it comes to the contour down the nose so yeah I've been enjoying these a lot been using them highly recommend them next up I of course knew the day that I tried this and put it on my face it was gonna be in this video this is from hourglass this is from their collection of three palettes that came out for the holiday season. The elephant one is my favorite. Now this one is intended for medium skin tones and it definitely is the one that flatters me the best and in my opinion has the best shade range as well though I really do love the tiger but that's a bit deep for me. You can see my review on all three of the palettes. I give you my thoughts and swatches and comparisons and all of that but this one is so stunning. This is always one of my favorite holiday releases. It's one of the ones that I was looking for the most to this year and I feel like they really did not disappoint the formula of our glasses powders are so luxurious and while these are pricey they are worth the money to me as well as just the value of it's really great based on what you would pay for an individual product from hourglass this one is great because it has finishing powders bronzer blush and highlights so it gives you that full and complete look I mean today I started off with this bronzer it just blended so beautifully and with ease all over the skin and then I used this blush right here hourglass blushes are one of the best formulas on the market if you ask me and then I use the highlight which is not too deep on me believe it or not it looks like it would be but again just a really high quality highlight and then I use this powder right here the dim light powder and I just kind of use that to add an all over glow to my face to mesh all of the products together I highly recommend you look into my review if you want more details on these palettes but of the three this one has been my favorite and my most used and every time I use this product it's just so quick and easy and my makeup looks beautiful. Next up I have a mascara. I wasn't sure I was gonna love it but I see what the hype is about. It was getting really good reviews and I was like mm, because I typically don't align with the popular mascara reviews because my eyelashes are so wimpy but oh my gosh you guys if you have short sparse thin lashes listen up. The Tower 28 Make Waves Mascara Game Changers. This is automatically one of my new favorite mascaras. I just feel Feel like it makes me not want to wear false lashes now like false lashes would look better with my look right now but I don't feel as though I need them you know I don't love because the wand is curved how it applies to my lower lashes it's just doesn't build up the way that I like because my lashes are so small it's hard to get in there but my upper lashes oh my gosh mascaras never make my upper lashes look good and this oddly gives my lashes lift and my lashes naturally point down towards the ground they're so straight and they just go downward this gives them some lift it doesn't curl them but it certainly gives them lift I don't know I haven't had a mascara that made me feel this way in a very very long time honestly this is one of the best mascaras of the year that I ever tried I mean top-notch this is probably gonna be in my 2022 favorites I haven't even
haven't even used it that much, but the results are that good. And I know it doesn't look that impressive on my lashes, but the fact that you can see my lashes is a win. And I'm telling you, this looks so much better than so many other mascaras I've tried. A must have. I know I say you can get really good drugstore mascaras, but like this is worth the extra 10 bucks or so. Cause drugstore isn't even cheap anyways anymore. I have an eyeliner. This is from one size and I've tried this eyeliner so many times, but he came out with new colors. This one in busty brown. Oh my gosh, I've been using it all the time. You guys know I'm a neutral makeup wearer at heart. So with the Too Faced palettes that launched, I've had a lot more opportunity to wear brown liner and I've been going for this. I love the tone of this brown liner. It's really great quality. And the only thing is with this eyeliner, and I've shared before because this is not a new formula or anything or a new product, is the applicator for me is a bit too long and it gets a little bit too flimsy, but I make it work because I love the color of this and the formula itself is really nice. Today, just because I have black eyeshadow on, I only filled in the inner part of my eye as well as with a wing. The application looks messy. I cleaned it up off camera, but yes, I've been loving this for my brown makeup looks. It's not as intense as a black eyeliner, which I think is a really nice change, but it still does, you know, lead the way with what direction you want your eyes to go. You know, I like to do wings and to elongate the eyes. This still does that. Brown is really nice. Don't sleep on brown liner. I love this one. Moving on to lips and then we'll get into the palettes. So this is not a new product. It's, I believe the only product here that isn't new that I tried this month, but it's one that I've reached back into my collection for consistently. So this is from M Cosmetics and it's the Soft Blur Velvet Lip Liner in the shade Teddy, which is the perfect everyday neutral lip liner. The M Cosmetics formula is really creamy, really easy to apply. Not the longest lasting lip pencil, but good enough. I don't really care. The color of it is so perfect for that contoured style lip. And I've been really into the lip liner and lip oil duo recently. This is perfect to give that naturally contoured lip. It has maybe a hint of warmth to it and could be a touch deeper for my perfect contoured lip, but this goes with so many lip colors. The formula is beautiful. M Cosmetics overall has a really beautiful lip liner formula. I definitely recommend this one. I've totally been using the shade Teddy the most, so great everyday lip color. I just realized I forgot to talk about an eyebrow product. I'll finish that after the lips, but anyways. I've tried a new lipstick that I really love, both for the color and the formula. Merit Beauty, first of all, look how luxurious this packaging is. It looks expensive. And this shade Baby is just the most beautiful neutral pink I have ever seen. It looks great with a brown lip liner, with a hot pink lip liner. It's so versatile. It's great for every day. I love it with the lip liner Teddy that I just talked about. They make the most beautiful neutral lip combination together. The Merit formula is very nice as well. It's quite hydrating. It's not the creamiest lipstick for Formula, but it's super nice. It looks nice on the lip. I'm running out of adjectives to describe a lipstick, but it's so nice. You know, it's not the most creamy or hydrating formula in the world. Got some on my teeth, but it's like a really good formula in a really exceptionally beautiful color. So Merit Baby is beautiful. And then the last lip product that I have to talk about that I've been reaching for on the daily is the Jaclyn Cosmetics Lip Oil in Maple Drip. I tried this formula last year, liked it, put it away, didn't really grab for it. And then she launched new colors. I don't even know if this was a new color, but it was new to me. And I love this just for every day. Again, it looks really good with the Teddy Lip Liner from M Cosmetics, but again, what doesn't? But this is perfect because it doesn't have too much pigment pigmentation, but it has just enough. It's really glossy. It looks super healthy on the lips, makes your lips look nice and plump. And it's the perfect color on its own without any other lip products underneath to just add color back into your face. Because do you know when you apply foundation and then you get some on your lips and then you look dead? This brings the color right back to the lips. I really love this formula as a lip oil. You know, it's hydrating, it's glossy, but it still adds color to the face. It reminds me a lot of the Dior lip oil formula. It's a really good one. She has a good one. And then the product that I forgot for my eyebrows is from Merit. This is the Volumizing Pomade. So I did do a collaboration this month with Merit Beauty and I was really excited because I got to try a bunch of the products from the line. This, one of my favorites, this and the lipstick are the best, but they have a lot of other good products that 
I'll talk about in my speed reviews, but this is one of my favorite tinted brow gels that I've ever used. It looks so beautiful on the eyebrows without any product on. So today I did use a brow pencil today, so you can't really see the full capabilities that this brow pomade has, but it's so good even without a base pencil underneath, at least on my brows. So I have some sparse areas in the arches of my brows, so when I'm doing something quick and I want that easy, simple five minute makeup look, I'll just run this through the brows. It adds nice color, it's not uneven, it makes my brows look nice and full, it holds them in place decently and then I'll go in with my brow pencil just to redefine my arches but yeah if you're looking for a good tinted brow gel this one is perfect because it doesn't look messy on the eyebrows but it will add the thickness and volume that you're probably looking for I do see that there are fibers in here I'm very picky when it comes to tinted brow gels they're not my favorite this is the best one that I've ever used and then I have two Three, I guess, eyeshadows to talk about. So the first one, so predictable. But yes, I've still been enjoying the Natasha Denona My Dream Palette. Is it my dream palette? No, but it's a really nice one. I like that I can get purple looks with it, warm tone looks, purple and warm tone looks, and a cool tone look. So I've been dying to try this look today to get this amazing cool tone look, which you almost don't really expect to even get from this palette. I use the shade Nurture all over my crease. This is a beautiful, cool-toned transition color. Love it, applied beautifully. It's the backbone of creating this look. It's very important. And then I went into a black is black, which doesn't swatch the best, but I think it applies just fine, blends out beautifully. I focused that along the lash line and then blended it out to kind of create a wing-like effect. I did also multiple times throughout creating this look go back to redefine the black, especially closest to the lash line since it is kind of acting as the eyeliner for today. And then I have Serenity right here, which is a cool tone taupe plummy kind of shade. It's definitely more on the mid-tone in depth, but I have that in the center of my lid to really keep that taupey look. And then I finished off with a small brush, Spontaneous. I have that on the inner third of my lid going kind of high in it. And then I don't know if you can see, but I do have it below my inner corner wing as well to brighten up the eyes. And this for me is an ideal everyday look. I love the cool tone neutral looks, but overall this palette, I mean, I've been enjoying it. It's really qu great quality. It's really fun. Is it the most unique palette in the world? No. Is it my all-time favorite Natasha Denona palette? No, but can staying consistent with her usual quality. I mean, this is great quality, just a great palette overall if you're into the color story. You know what? So I reviewed this palette, but I actually have the rest of the collection that I still need to play with. I haven't pulled out the cheek palette yet, so I will definitely do a speed reviews on that soon once I test it out. I've just been so busy testing a bunch of other products. But I still need to test everything out from that collection, but I've still been enjoying the eyeshadow palette very much. And the last items for makeup that I have to talk about are very tentative, but I think these deserve a quick shout out. So maybe they didn't make the list, but I want to talk about these because I've used these twice. And every time I've worn them, I've been obsessed with the look because Kaleidos did it once again. So even though I haven't used these enough to like finalize my thoughts on these, I can tell you now they're really good. So I want to mention them. They need their moment. So this is from the new Night Creations collection from Kaleidos and they launched some new quads. So the first one, Flowing Haze right here is a little bit more on the cool tone side. This is the one that I need to experiment with more. And then I have Glowing Iris, which is more of a bright purple. And need you to check out the get ready with me video that I filmed and should have been posted like earlier this week or later last week the look that I did with these palettes one of my favorite looks like I was feeling myself all day and Kaleidos did an amazing job with the quality if you don't know I love purple eyeshadow if I'm not wearing neutrals I'm wearing purple and these are both a beautiful rendition of purple palettes you know I love that there's a cooler gray tone one which not a lot of brands will do and then this brighter blue toned kind of palette which again a lot of brands don't do so they didn't even play it safe with the purples that they chose and they're really good quality and the looks that you get are so stunning so I haven't used those a ton so I would definitely update you in my palette rankings which will come up very soon but I just know you know they're the good so I need to talk about them that sums it up for makeup I did want to talk about my purse of the month they don't have this specific colorway anymore but they have it in a bunch of different colors and they're kind of always redesigning it every 
season. This is from Kate Spade and it's the Little Better Sam, I believe is the name of it. I will have it linked in the description box if you want to check it out. So for a while, I really wanted the Prada Re-Edition Nylon Bag, right? It was really expensive though, it's by Prada. I think it's like $1,800 or something like that. So I went into Prada and I touched it and I was like, the Prada was so flimsy. It just, it's not that it felt like cheap quality, but it was $1,800 and I just didn't want to pay $1,800 for a luxury purse that just felt like paper. So instead, I picked up this guy, which is not a dupe really, but it's that nylon material. It's simple, it's black. Um, it's much longer, a very different shape than the Prada, but I no longer feel like I need a Prada nylon bag because this is just as good. And if anything, I feel like the quality of this is thicker than the Prada bag. And I like this because it's super casual. I've been enjoying shoulder bags a lot more recently. I actually like that it's longer than the Prada would be because you can fit a bunch of junk in there, which I love very small bags because I'm a small person. This is the perfect size for me to be able to carry a lot of things in here if I need. It goes with everything. It goes great with athletic outfits. It goes great with dressier outfits. It feels very high quality compared to when I touched the Prada. So yeah, not a dupe, but same idea in terms of having a nylon purse at a much more respectable price if you ask me. So I mean, I know a lot of people have their re-editions and they love them from Prada. I'm still eyeing the leather one, BT dubs. But in terms of the nylon one, if you don't want to pay that price, Kate Spade has these nylon bags and I think they are just so great and versatile and cute yet yeah, simple. So I will have them linked down below. Like I said, they don't have this one with the cute little flowers on it anymore, but so good, you guys. Love this one. So anyways, that is all I have for this month's monthly favorites. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It actually ended up being a lot longer than I thought it was going to be. Make sure you guys are subscribed to my channel and like this video because I will be doing my monthly... Will I be doing a monthly palette rankings? I might not. I didn't review a lot, but that will be coming next month. And Anyways, who cares? <laughs> Make sure you subscribe to this channel and like this video, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one.